It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. One of the major concerns that many have about uh, President Trump is that given his authoritarian tendencies, he would be prone to use powers of the presidency to a far greater extent than, say, President Obama did. One of these powers that most people are not aware of is embodied in the National Defense Authorization Act, the NDAA. Normally, this act is simply to provide funding for the U.S. military. However, in 2012, the NDAA included several controversial provisions, such as giving the president authority to indefinitely detain civilians. Shortly after the NDAA was passed, Chris Hedges, with several, uh, several other people, challenged the Obama administration in court. Now we have the possibility of a new Gingrich, uh, who might be uh, uh, presiding over such matters and who will be advising a president. Trump. Uh, he's uttering the possibility of reestablishing a committee on un-American activities. Let's have a look at his response in a recent interview he did. Well, so let me go a step further. Yeah. Because remember, San Bernardino, Fort Hood, and Orlando involve American citizens. We're going to ultimately declare war on Islamic supremacists, and we're going to say, if you pledge allegiance to ISIS, you are a traitor, and you have lost your citizenship. And we're going to take much tougher positions. In the late 1930s, President Franklin Roosevelt was faced with Nazi penetration in the United States. We, we originally created the House on American Activities Committee to go after Nazis. We passed several laws in 1938 and 1939 to go after Nazis, uh, and we made it illegal to help the Nazis. We're going to presently have to go take the similar steps here. Now joining us to talk about all of this is Chris Hedges. Chris is a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, a columnist at Truth Dig and Alternet. He was the Middle East Bureau Chief for the New York Times and has reported extensively from the Middle East. Chris, good to have you back. Thank you. Chris, what do you make of uh, uh, that clip we just ran of Newt Gingrich and uh, what this holds for us in terms of the NDAA's implementation inside the country? Right. Well, Section 1021 of the National Defense Authorization Act, uh, which was signed into law by Obama at midnight 2011, essentially permits the government to carry out acts of extraordinary rendition on the streets of American cities against U.S. citizens who, quote-unquote, substantially support, whatever that means, al-Qaeda, the Taliban, or something called associated forces, another nebulous term, to strip them of due process and hold them indefinitely in military detention centers, including in our black sites overseas, such as Guantanamo or anywhere else. Um, that section has been renewed every year. Uh, I went to the Southern District Court of New York and sued Obama. Uh, we won. Uh, the Obama administration appealed the decision. We went to the Second Circuit. The Second Circuit denied my standing, which deny essentially means they denied my right to bring the case. We filed a cert, a petition to the Supreme Court to ask them to hear it, uh, and they also denied my right to bring the case, essentially enshrining this in law. During that two-year legal battle, uh, the lawyers, uh, Carl Mayer and Bruce Afron, approached the Democratic leadership around Pelosi and said, because they do have to renew it every year, all you have to do is insert into that uh, language that this does not apply to U.S. citizens, and we will drop the lawsuit. Uh, of course, they didn't do that because it does apply to U.S. citizens. It was written uh, for uh, the containment of U.S. citizens in a moment of unrest. It overturned the 1878 Posse Comitatus Act, which prohibits the military from acting as a domestic police force. Why? Well, because climate change, economic dislocation, uh, the ruling elites uh, understand that the possibility of widespread unrest is possible, uh, and they want to use the military as a mechanism by which that unrest is crushed. Um, Obama, when he signed it into law, said that he wouldn't use it. Uh, that g gave it no legal, uh, you know, it didn't mean anything legally. He could use it if he wanted to. He just, in a signing statement, said he wouldn't. Uh, we have seen all, most all of our constitutional rights, including our right to privacy, overturned by judicial fiat. Uh, unlimited corporate campaign contributions through Citizens United 
becomes the right to petition the government, a form of free speech. This is upending the traditional notions of constitutional rights, habeas corpus, due process, of course, as we saw with Section 1021 of the NDA has been removed, on and on and on again, coupled with the most sophisticated security and surveillance apparatus in human history. All of this in, is in the hands of figures like Donald Trump, uh, Rudy Giuliani, John Bolton, and others. And um, given what I expect is going to be the seismic reaction to uh, the ineptitude uh, and the inability of the part of, on the part of a Trump presidency to respond to the most pressing issues uh, facing the majority of Americans, uh, they will use all of the tools at their disposal. Uh, and they were handed these tools by the Republican and the Democratic Party. Uh, and this is something that all of us, uh, Ralph Nader perhaps being at the forefront, who have been fighting against the legal erosion of our civil liberties, have been warning about and fearing for some time, and now it's here. All right, Chris. Uh, so the courts are one mechanism of uh, challenging a, a Trump. Uh, but uh, there are many people out there who believe that really uh, only way to challenge this is on the streets. And we saw much of that taking place uh, last night. And um, since uh, you are the author of uh, a very famous book called uh, Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt, um, what's, uh, what should activists and those who are um, resisting a Trump presidency do about these kinds of situations here? Well, yeah, the only mechanism we have left is civil disobedience, but let's not pretend democracy died uh, on November 8th. We haven't been living in a functioning democracy for some time. Uh, there are no institutions left that can authentically be considered democratic. They're all essentially controlled by corporate power, uh, the mass media, academia, the political establishment. Um, so, uh, yeah, civil disobedience, uh, just as we saw before. Uh, but the difference is that the state, I think, under a Trump administration, will respond even more violently uh, and even more savagely. Uh, and you, I think, got a glimpse of that in the new Gingrich clip. Um, anybody who, who dissents will be considered a traitor, maybe a terrorist. Uh, they will certainly be demonized in a subservient corporate media by a Trump administration. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I think, yes, that is the response. Uh, unfortunately, that was the response, uh, and, and it's a response we should have stepped outside the mainstream a long time ago, so we didn't end up now in, this, in the grip of uh, an administration that is, um, you know, going to run roughshod over all constitutional legal restraints. All right, Chris, I thank you for joining us. And um, I think many people are looking for moral guidance. And so we look forward to having you back at this critical moment in history. Great, thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.